Now we're live on the right show. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Now I'm, I wasn't late. We were streaming onto the wrong show. So I'm going to have to redo the, the MLB show right in like the five minutes I have. That's mm -hmm. frustrating. No, mm -hmm. we're still on the MLB show, I think. No, we're not. We're not? Positive. We are live. Oh, mine hadn't changed. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're live on the right one now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but luckily, we only have four games to go through, so I, we'll probably be finished with a few minutes to spare so I can fix that. Because a lot of people are, you know what, I should delete that now. Because a lot of people are clicking on it like, oh, they dropped their MLB picks. So let me fix that. And that shows right after this. Um, <clears throat> delete forever. All right, deleted that. Okay, so we're live on the right show. We're ready to go. Uh, we got Sweet 16, four games to get through, obviously. Uh, no, uh, NC State Marquette is first. As you guys know, I put out a, a video the other night for this. I'm on Marquette. I think the, uh, the NC State magic comes to an end here. Um, it should have come to an end last week, honestly. There's a lot of NC State's got a, a nice like support uh support system though because i was getting criticism for taking oakland plus six and a half last week which covered but obviously covered in overtime so nc state could easily lost that game uh i'm on marquette in this one i am laying um i actually think i bet this one at six and a half already if i didn't bet it i meant to uh, but so i would still take it at seven scoop yeah, I was back and forth here, but I'm going to ride NC State, actually. Um, uh, I said I was going to go with Marquette as long as Kolek's been here, which, I mean, it's true. He makes the whole team run, but NC State's playing equally as good right now. Also, in terms of metrics, it's hard to look at the last 10 games or last five, even from Marquette, because this team really is completely different with Kolek. And, uh, but NC State's, yeah, he's been killing. they've been killing it right now. Even though Kolek's been out, um, you know, he's not defending the inside, something Marquette has really struggled with defending the paint short mid-range shots uh that's where 475 pound dj burns comes into play he's been a monster down low since the start of the acc tournament he's doing the best zion impression right now weight and all um no but marquette has been 325th in defending the short shots the last five they're struggling a little bit on the defensive side of the ball they defended three really well but most of nc state's shots right now are coming inside the perimeter with burns and diara down low i think marquette's gonna have a hard time defending it also, DJ Horn had an off game against uh, Oakland. I think he comes back and has a better shooting night. Uh, NC State shuts down Cam Jones on a perimeter. Um, then it's it's not going to be great for Marquette. I can only see uh, Colic beating them if they shut down Cam Jones. So, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with NC State here and uh, take the points. I definitely don't love the idea of laying seven points this late into the tournament, where obviously of a team got here, they're playing good basketball, and it's it's definitely a little worrisome. Uh, let's see what Andrew wants to do here. Can you um, hear me? Yeah, yeah we got you. Um, we saw it last night with UConn for me. I'm not afraid to lay whatever with some of these Big East teams, and I'm definitely not afraid with Marquette here. I said um, there were th there were four ACC teams left. I only saw one of them winning. Um, the one I saw winning lost last night, but I'm I'm going up against I'm going against this NC State team too. I, I eventually midnight will strike, right? I think that's what the that's what the saying is when Cinderellas are going um going crazy, and I think that's tonight. I will give them credit; they got the with the way Burns is playing inside, they're pretty much beating up everybody. Obviously, they were beating up Oakland, which is a huge deal. But um, if he's playing hot, he maybe they can keep it close. I think they'll be able to contain him enough. Um, like you said, when you have the best guard in the country, and that's what Colex has been, um, he's a playmaker assisting, passing the ball, and he can score himself. So, I mean, they have, they're way too much talent and too dynamic for this uh, NC State team, something they haven't seen in this run that they're going on. Two picks for Marquette. And Toast, by the way, speaking of North Carolina, that was a hell of a fucking bet last night, Alabama. You were the only one in the world. You actually put it as your top bet, too. Called a lot of heat for that one. Uh, that yeah, was that was. If R. J. Davis would make one three pointer, maybe that'd be great. Maybe toast. Yeah. Hand, maybe toast factored that into his handicap. He did. He did. Well, I he said it actually. I think he said it if he's off, no. then it's, yeah. Um, can you guys hear me? Because my microphone isn't working. I'm it, using, it, like... Your your audio is coming in through your computer, not your mic. Uh, yeah, but, I know, but I we can't can... get my mic to turn on. I don't know what it is. We, we can hear you, but it, you just don't sound as crisp as usual. But it's fine. They can hear you. 
Okay. Um, well, either way, Marquette's my favorite bet on the board. Um, I think they are going to put DJ Burns in a freaking blender. Uh, they're going to put him in pick and roll over and over again. I watched like 15 minutes of him trying to defend pick and rolls by multiple teams this year. It's an absolute disaster. Marquette's one of the best teams in the country running the pick and roll uh, with Kolick. I think this is an absolute complete mismatch. Um, I, yeah, I, I really, really like my fair hair. Yeah, I thought all the numbers then, and if – uh, the, those videos that I upload, I uploaded this one on Wednesday night, I think. Those come from Andy's notes. I thought all the notes Andy provided me here pointed towards Marquette. Yeah, I just uh, couldn't add much more. <laughs> but you know what? All the notes I thought pointed to a North Carolina blowout as well. So Alabama yeah. won that game. I saw somebody just put, you picked uh, North Carolina yesterday, so I think I'll fade you on this one. Dude, I'm not the only person that had North Carolina. Trust yeah, me. I, I think the whole world. Did it it, it was literally R.J. Davis's worst game of the season, so it sucks, but yeah. Is R.J. Davis, you think that hurts his draft stock, biggest game of the year? And... No. no. I don't think so. You definitely don't want to lay an egg in, in the oh, season. You don't, want to, go you don't four, want to. Four for 21 or whatever the hell he finished that. Well, if, what I'm saying is if he laid that egg in the ACC tournament, he could have bounced back and everyone would have forgotten about it. But to lay yeah. it in yeah. your last game with the team, right? Because he's entering the draft, RJ Davis. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And Baycott's done, right? Oh. Yeah, I would imagine. Well, he, he doesn't he have an eighth year of eligibility? Well, who even knows <laughs> at this point? <laughs> uh, so... Uh, Marquette wins the poll, but actually, there's a lot of people. It's not a true Scoop Island here. Uh, Scoop is on the show is on his own island with NC State plus seven, but 44% of you clicked NC State plus seven. So this is not a, an overwhelming public side here with Marquette minus seven. There's a lot of people taking the points with the Wolfpack. Uh, let's move to the next one. Zags. Scoop went first last time, so let's switch that up. We'll get Andy up first for this one. Uh, Andy, yeah. uh, look, my bet on this game is I, I think the line's kind of fair. In fact, I think at five and a half, maybe the value's probably on Gonzaga. That being said, Purdue's my pick to win the championship. Yeah, I've been riding them. I, I, I've been on Purdue. I'm not bailing on them here, so I, I'm going to put Purdue up for me, but I'm not really going to argue with anybody that's taking the Zags with the points. So wh what are you doing? I, I did the same thing when I looked at this game. I looked back to how I felt before the game started, and when I looked at the bracket, I said, ooh, this would be a really good spot for Gonzaga. And I still think with how well they're playing, it is. But I don't know. Purdue is probably the second-best team in this tournament right now. They are playing – I mean, they blow, obviously they killed Grambling, which we expected, but I don't think anybody expected what they did to Utah State. As uh, um, I thought we all expected it would be bad, but not as bad as it was. They beat they, the playing, hell out of yeah, Utah State. <laughs> They are they are looking back at what happened last year and they are not letting that happen again. They are they are not playing close games so far. And um I do think Gonzaga's playing good basketball. Obviously their their win over Kansas was I didn't expect that. I actually thought Kansas was gonna win that game. Um and, and it was a fur it was one half of basketball pretty much that was good. But I think Purdue's coming in hot. I think Edie's coming in hot. I, I'm gonna side Purdue here. I, this is it's the best game of the night, but I think for me, it's the worst in terms of betting value because I honestly, I could see either of these teams winning and winning the net or getting to the national championship. But in terms of like this game specifically, if you would have told me two weeks ago, Gonzaga, Purdue, I probably would have told you Gonzaga, but man, Purdue looks elite right now. So I, re I really don't know. Who, who do you have in this game and winning this game in your bracket? I had Gonzaga. You had Gonzaga beating Purdue. Coming in your into bracket. the bracket, I looked at it a lot different. Purdue came in playing just I mean they were they were pretty good, but we know how they struggle in the tournament. But now we've seen them play two tournament games and just absolutely pummel their opponents. So Yeah. Uh Scoop. Uh I'm gonna go with the Zags, actually. Um there's something about Purdue I still just don't really believe in. Even watching them, I feel like they're going to collapse. Probably stupid, but I am who I am. Um, Edie's always going to get 25 and 10. I don't think that's going to be a difference here. Uh, but his supporting cast with Braden Smith, Lance Jones, Lawyer, just watching them, they don't really impress me. The second half of that Utah State game, that whole team gave up. But the first half, all three guards didn't look like anything. Uh, I know they're three great three-point shooters. The issue is they don't really take advantage of that. The whole game relies on getting the ball down low. Uh, Osibor got killed down low by Kaufman Wren and Edie. Uh, but Utah State's a bad team defending the rim and in the paint, uh, something they've been terrible at all season. Uh, Gonzaga, though, is a solid defense mid range, especially in the paint. Edie won't be able to do everything. Gonzaga doesn't let you get off good shots no matter where you are. Also, on the other end of the floor, EK and Watson are two of the better front court duos in the tournament left. 
Uh, if Edie is on one, they'll pass out to the other. Uh, something that uh, Nemhar has been really solid at year is dis- distributing the ball, getting assists. Offensively, Gonzaga is just clicking. I think they have enough to say in this game. Uh, I get Edie has size, obviously the size advantage here, but uh, I like Gonzaga's offense, and I like that. Um, I don't really trust um, Kopp and Ryan as the other front court when they have EK and Watson, so I'll take Gonzaga. Toast, you're on the Zags, right? Homer bet. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, I know I'm a homer, and it is what it is, and I wish the pie charts don't make me like it in any way, shape, or form. I thought I'd be kind of on an island, but I am 2-0 and betting the Zags in this tournament. Um, these teams have played each other each of the last two years. It's been the same exact story each game. Uh, both teams play a really close second half. Purdue comes out in the second half and absolutely destroys them. Uh, they played earlier this year. I think there's a huge difference, though. Gonzago is starting Dusty Stromer. Now they're going to be starting Ben Gray, who's about five inches taller. Ben Gray can shoot to three. And if he can get it going, and I understand that EK is not a three-point shooter in any way, shape, or form, but he did hit two of them against them the last time they played. He's not going to take a lot of them, but I think he can get um, – I think he can pull Edie away from the rim just a little bit if, if – if they need to, if they're going to be making shots, but it's about Purdue, Lance Jones. He's going to be a, supposed to be a big part of Purdue's attack. He's been absolutely non-existent the last month. So if he's not playing well, that leaves with Purdue. And I think that with Lawyer and Smith, I think that Nemhard and Hickman can deal with them. So if you're going to give me five and a half points, it's re- it's do the Gonzaga hit shots in the second half. If they do, they're probably going to cover this number. If they don't, Purdue's going to win by 20. Okay. Fair enough. So we're split on this one. Uh, Two of us on Purdue, two of us on the Zags. Poll is on the on Purdue. Um, not like a complete runaway, but 60% of you said Purdue minus five and a half. 37% of you said Zags. So pretty close to a 60-40 split. So po- polling on Purdue, but not a crazy sweep there. Duke Houston. Duke Houston, and I'm very interested to see where the poll is on this one because... Houston's just given us such a, mi- a mixed bag. I mean, there are times where they look like the best team in the country and it might not be close. And then there's other times where you're like, oh, man, Houston ain't it. <laughs> so <laughs> I really don't am confused. We'll see what the poll is. Scoop, what are you doing? Actually, uh, let's get Toast go first on this one. Toast? Um... I, I guess I lean Houston. I didn't bet this game. Or, no, yes, I did. I did bet Marquette, Houston, Moneyline, Parlay. That's what I did. So I, I'm not really in love with it considering the world's on Houston, but I just have a feeling that Houston absolutely mauls this Duke team. Um, I'm not really impressed with what Duke has done. I understand that they looked very, very good their last time out and shooting, what was it, you know, 20-some threes or, or making 20-some threes or whatever the hell it was. Um, but the difference between Vermont and, James Madison and now Houston is absolutely huge. And keep in mind, Duke didn't look good against North Carolina. They didn't look good against NC State. They looked good against bad teams. Uh, Like their last win before that against NC State, they played really well against. But Louisville, Virginia, Miami, Florida State, I mean, it's not like Duke's beating any very good team. So I think that Houston and their defense is going to maul them. Like I said, I don't love that the world's on it, but I just have no reason to believe that Duke's going to win this possible game. Okay. What about Andy? I like what he said a lot about the defense. Obviously, we know when we talk about a Houston basketball game, there's going to be defense from them. Um, but their offense is playing much better lately. I mean, uh, when we did the when I did the notes for this game, I looked very rarely do I go through th- um, shot charts from a team, and I find three spots that they are significantly better than a team at, and that was what I saw. Um, recent in the recent play from Houston, they're really playing well, pretty much at every spot on the floor, shooting the basketball. And Duke has had their their struggles defending the three, just trying uh, defending the mid range. Like they've had their struggles in a few different places, um, where Houston's been much better. I mean, their offense has just been completely uh, a lot better lately. Something we knocked them on, they're much better at now. And I thought Duke got very lucky with their draw. I never thought James Madison was keeping that game close. I, I had said that when that, that happened. I thought James Madison got a good draw, and then Duke got a good draw getting in those matchups against each other. So I'm not I'm not entirely impressed with this Duke team. As good as I think they are, I just think Houston's much better and playing better um, just overall. So I'm, I'm going to go Houston. Plus, Houston, it, everything against them in that game. I mean, every shot was going in for A&M down the stretch, and they still found a way to finish it off in overtime. So give them credit for that they're playing tough scoop are you gonna put me on a duke island here uh yeah i'm gonna ride the heavy public favorite in houston uh 
Filipowski may cry in this one. Uh, it's too hard getting to the basket. Oh, they're playing too hard of a defense. Uh, yeah, I hate that guy. He sucks. Uh, Houston's not James Madison. There's no talent gap here. Like Toast said the last time we played, uh, when we talked Duke, uh, who have they beat? Duke hasn't beaten average teams all year, except maybe a Baylor team earlier in this year, which with Andy said, it was three months ago. Who cares? Um, they beat a bunch of middle-of-the-road ACC teams. This is a down year for them. They, you know, they still had losses to Arkansas, Grant, um, uh, what's his, what's Georgia Tech, uh, Pitt, Wake Forest, and the best team they beat was Virginia, maybe, and a Clemson one-point win. Uh, obviously, Duke is good. They're not they're not shit. I'm not saying they are, but they also haven't played a Houston defense in the ACC. Uh, even if Duke's numbers are good at protecting the ball, again, not the same competition. Houston's second to takeaways. They're going to get up in your face, take the ball. Duke's very solid three-point shooting team, but Houston just doesn't allow you to take the three-point shots. But when they do, they're highly contested. Uh, you know, they're a top 10 team defending the three and second best at defending the three at the break. Um, when Duke gets inside with Philip Paskey, Houston defends that well, too. They're number one in the short mid-range. Um, yeah, I don't, Houston's offense gives you a little worry, but they're 11th in offensive rebounding. They get second chances. They protect the ball, even though they're not the best shooting team. So if Houston can box out just a little bit on defense, I know they're a terrible defensive rebounding team, but I think they'll be able to cover the spread to, you know, and I, I, I like their defensive matchups. Cryer and she could easily lock up Roach and McCain. Plus you have to watch out for the non battle tested teams. Duke has Vermont and James Madison leading up to this Houston game. So it's a little different. So I'm going to take Houston. <clears throat> Okay, fine. I guess, I guess I'll, I'll be all by myself on Duke, and I'm betting it now, because someone said in the comment, if you bet, if you bet Duke tonight, you're going broke. I'm doing it. You told me that about Alabama, though. Yep, that's why I'm doing it. I know. I'm like, I wish I was you right now, so bad. <laughs> That's the kind. That, that's the kind of motivation. I, I need. feel like you felt yesterday. This is exactly how I feel right, right now. It's like when, when people are on the other side that say that. It's like okay, yeah, like, best to be on the other side. I feel like we okay. were robbed with Alabama winning that game, and and UNC losing and Arizona. Regardless, losing, re regardless, Alabama plus four was the right bet, even if North yeah. Carolina won the game. Yeah. Um. So I'm on Duke. I just took the money line. John 59%, 39% in favor of Houston. I'm on my own little Duke Blue Devil Island. Let's go. Last game up. Creighton, Tennessee. Uh, you guys already know where I'm at on this one uh, from the video that me and Andy made. I am on Creighton. Andy, I don't know if you even shared your pick with me for that one. You just I, edited the video. Yeah, I edited the video. I was pretty clear about this one all year, though. I don't... I, I bet them last game, and they let me down. Tennessee... Um, if you get in a track meet with Tennessee, you're probably going to beat them. I mean, that's they're they're a team that oddly enough they're not shooting well right now. Dalton Connect's been cold the past few games. If he comes out cold, they're a, a useless team. Um, <laughs> this is not because I like Georgia. Every time I pick against Tennessee, everyone says sure it is because I like Georgia. Oh. It's not. I have Creighton okay, in buddy. my national. I have Creighton in my national championship. So Good I'm 100 percent on their side. They're hitting. They didn't even hit their shots really in the first part of the Oregon game. They just got hot down the stretch in overtime. They are, uh, they are, they are built like Tennessee, but they're a better shooting team than Tennessee. They've been better away from home this year. They've been better in these matchups this year. They're just a. I think Creighton and and, and Tennessee are built the same. I just think Creighton. All right, Andy. I think that's the right bet to make here. Two of us on Creighton, and it looks like Paul is slightly leaning towards Creighton. What about Toast? Blue Devil, Blue Jay up. Blue maybe. Devil, Blue uh, Jay yeah. up. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> There's some kind of blue in uh, there. <laughs> yeah, so e either way, um, like for Creighton, first, first and foremost, one of the biggest teams in the Alexander, another one, not to mention you have a guy like Hulk Redder inside. Um, Connect's been cold a couple games. Yeah, do I expect him to stay cold? I'm not really sure, but even if he give me 20, I'm not really worried about Zakai Ziegler or Adu or however you say his last name, really. Um, this Tennessee offense doesn't really really do it for me at all, and I don't really trust Rick Barnes in this tournament. Not to say that Doug McDermott... Oh, shit. We lost, your, we lost your audio, they said. Oh, now it's back. I've been hearing him, so I don't... Yeah, we can. Go ahead, Toast. No. 
Uh, McDermott, not that McDermott's been to a Final Four or anything like that, but he did take this Creighton team to uh, Sweet 16 in 2021. He took them to an Elite Eight last year as well. Uh, so I, I think that this is, if you're going to give me Creighton plus three and a half or essentially a, a possession, I'm going to take it. All right, so three on Creighton. And yeah, I can see it on the levels. It looks like Yardio's coming in fine and then it cuts out. So in between this and the MLB show, like shut your computer down, unplug your mic and plug it back in. In between the, sh in the show. All right, Scoop. Yeah, these are two teams I have eliminated already. So uh, Cre <laughs> Creighton probably should have been, but because they gave it to Dante when you need to shoot a one on one on an inbound, that makes a lot of sense. But yeah, it's a tough one. I'm gonna go with Creighton. Uh, Rick Barnes likes losing in the Sweet six Sweet Sixteen. So what the hell? Um, Dalton Connect and a uh, I do are still one two of the only players that can score on this team. Plus, Kalkbrenner is a bigger post presence than I do here. He's the size on him. I'm going with the better offense overall here. Creighton has one of the best offenses in the league. Third and effective field goal percentage, 32nd and three-point percentage. But one thing they do is shoot the three-point uh, uh, shot a ton. Almost half of their shots come from three. And even though Tennessee has a pretty good three-point defense, they're, that's going to drag everyone towards the perimeter, which will open up their mid-range in the paint. They're just as a great shooting team down low. I've said it before, and so it's Toast and Andy. If connects off, this game's going to be over. The last five games, Tennessee is 335th in effective field goal percentage. They're taking most of the shots from three, and none of them are falling. They're below 30% from three. Tennessee isn't going to get to the line a bunch either, so they're not going to get any free points. Creighton's really disciplined. Uh, but not only that, they're going to out-rebound Tennessee most likely. Uh, yeah, Creighton's an overall bigger team. I think their length's going to hurt Tennessee down low and on a perimeter, where Ziggler's only five foot eight. Uh Skyrim can match up well with Connect, and I trust Creighton's going to hit their shots more than Tennessee. I know Tennessee has a great defense, but I just like Creighton's offense better. Well, it can comes, I say, it comes can down I say to one thing, too. Yeah. Even if Dalton Connect goes off like the Kentucky game where he scored 40, they still lost. So it's not like it just means if he goes off that Tennessee's going to win. So well, I just, to just to give you an idea, so both these teams, three-point shooting teams primarily, they, they both these teams take more three-point shots than the average. In fact, Creighton's top 20 in three-point frequency, uh, Tennessee top 75. So both these teams take a lot of three-point shots. Ten Creighton's shooting percentage, way better than Tennessee's. Uh, in fact, Creighton's hitting almost 40% from above the break in the last 10 games, Tennessee 32%. But not just that, both teams, uh, Tennessee, uh, Creighton has much better defense against the three-point shot. Creighton against the above the break three is 36 in the country in the last 10 games. Tennessee's defense against the above the, the above the break three, 126. So Creighton, these are two three-point shooting teams. Creighton's making more of theirs, and, and Creighton defends the three better. So yeah, Creighton's going to win this game, man. But it's March Madness, so flip a damn coin with the, some of these, So man. Tennessee wins by 40. Yeah, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> 62. I had Tennessee losing to St. Peter, so I had... <laughs> Same. When I, I when I first started when I first started doing this a few years ago and I heard people like professional better say like ah, there's not much value on the playoffs and in the March Madness I was like what what are you talking about but after doing it for a few years like okay yeah I get it yeah, these teams <laughs> never see each other it's hard man there's no common opponents it's just like what not much to go by not to mention it's just I feel like Tennessee played in the a B East team this year Okay, so that's the last game, and I got to go and get ready for the baseball show, which will be in six minutes. Now, if you see on YouTube, it'll say MLB picks 415. It's not 415. It just wouldn't let me schedule for four because it was too close. So I will be right. Me, Toast, Prop Beaver. We don't even have a fourth. So it'll be me, Toast, and Prop Beaver. Damn it. I just realized we don't have a fourth. So, yeah, I'll be right back. See you guys in five minutes.